Hello, my name is Lorna Marson. I am a professor of transplant surgery at the University of Edinburgh, and I work at the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh as a clinical renal and pancreas transplant surgeon. I'm past president of the British Transplantation Society, and I am a board member of Akita. And it is a great pleasure to be here with you today. And I will be talking to you briefly about strategies to combat ischemia reperfusion injury. So I'm just going to share my screen. So what is the problem here? Well, the problem is that in kidney transplantation, ischemia reperfusion injury manifests itself as delayed graft function, which affects up to 50% of all deceased donor kidney transplants. It is associated with a higher risk of acute rejection, higher serum creatinine at one year, and an increased risk of graft loss. So what are the risk factors that contribute to delay graft function? Well, we know that these are donor factors, recipient factors, and also logistical or prolonged cold ischemic time. And so if we look at strategies to combat ischemia reperfusion injury, there are three potential uh, areas to focus upon. Optimizing the logistical process, focusing on treating, in inverted commas, the kidney through perfusion technology or treating the recipient. And I'm going to give examples of each of these three strategies. So in terms of optimizing the logistical process in order to reduce cold ischemic time, we undertook a national study in the UK, which really tried to look at all the different contributory factors from the journey from retrieving the kidney in the donor through to transplanting it in the recipient at a geographically different location. And what we found when we reviewed national data of just under 2,000 transplants, that there was indeed a significant variation in cold ischemic time between centers uh, from between around 10 hours to around 18 hours with an overall median cold ischemic time of just under 14 hours. We found that the most significant factor that contributed to a difference in cold ischemic time was the cross-match policy. So that in some centres in the UK, and now following on from this study in all centres in the UK, in selected patients with careful review by our H&I colleagues, of uh, their tissue typing and antibody status, we are able to undertake the majority of kidney transplants without waiting for the results of a prospective cross match, which as many of you will aware, can take up to four hours. And we found that in those transplants that went ahead with this virtual cross match, there was a reduction in cold ischemic time of around three hours when compared with those in which the cross match results were awaited. Other factors contributed to prolongation of cold ischemic time, but this virtual cross-match policy was the most significant. So if we turn our attention to how we might manage the kidney in order to reduce ischemia reperfusion injury, you will be very aware of there being a raft of techniques that are being currently examined in, in the area of organ perfusion. And the objectives of these techniques are to allow extension of the preservation time, to allow assessment of function, to improve and increase organ utilization, and to improve the outcomes post-transplant. And various approaches have been adopted. And I'm going to give an example of each of these. Many of you will be very familiar with this a hypothermic machine perfusion for, uh, for kidney transplantation. And in a recent Cochrane systematic review, we can see that in both those in which both those sets of kidney transplants in which there was a short cold ischemic time and a longer cold ischemic time, that the use of hypothermic machine perfusion reduced 
the risk of delay graph function when compared with static cold storage. In addition to that, uh, a more, a, another recent study investigated whether the uh, adding in oxygenation within a uh, cold perfusion circuit added benefit. And in this randomized control trial, in which 197 kidney pairs were randomized, uh, they demonstrated that this could be delivered safely, uh, and but that there was no significant difference in uh, one-year graph function or, or indeed um, reduction in delay graph function, but that potential benefits uh, were suggested by analysis of secondary outcomes and therefore further work is ongoing. So what about normothermic perfusion? Well, if we look first of all at ex vivo normothermic perfusion, and in the United Kingdom, this has really been driven uh, forward by Mike Nicholson uh, and working with Sarah Hosgood, first of all in Leicester and now in Cambridge. And they were really the first uh, group to demonstrate the potential benefit of ex vivo normothermic perfusion. And currently we await with interest the outcome of the randomized control trial that they have run comparing uh, the outcome in terms of delay graph function for kidneys that underwent this EVMP compared with static cold storage. What I think is really interesting about these new perfusion rigs is the potential not only to uh, improve outcomes because of perfusion, but actually to recondition the kidneys in this case uh, using a variety of techniques. And this is a slide which Emily Thompson from the University of Newcastle shared with me about her work in which using the EVMP rig, they added multipotent adult progenitor cells to the MV EVMP rig in which the kidney sat. And these are licensed uh, to, to an immunomodulatory phenotype with the hypothesis that by actually delivering this immunomodulatory capacity in these cells to the kidney on the rig, you might then recondition uh, the kidney and reduce ischemia reperfusion injury. And whilst this is interesting itself, perhaps what is more important is this demonstrates a paradigm shift in how we might consider intervening on kidneys to reduce ischemia reperfusion through this novel delivery system in which we could incorporate a wide range of immunomodulatory agents and indeed cells. This hopefully would lead to increased utilization, reduction in the transplant waiting list and improved both early and long-term function. An alternative strategy is to perfuse the organs in situ at the donor hospital. And uh, in Edinburgh, we have uh, undertaken, we continue to undertake as many of our DCD retrievals using normothermic regional perfusion. And this slide really is to demonstrate the logistical challenge uh, that, that this um, poses as we try and deliver this both regionally and nationally. We had to hire a bigger van and change uh, the size of plane that we used in order to include all of the kit, but also the team that is required, the perfusionist team that is required to run normothermic regional perfusion. And the main interest of this has been in liver transplantation. And in which an enormous thermic regional re, uh, perfusion, the rig is set up so that uh, at the time of retrieval, uh, the uh, donor blood continues to circulate to the organs of interest. So if it's an intra-abdominal retrieval only, then the, the regional circulation would, would not go above the diaphragm. And you can see here, this allows a visual demonstration of the organ, the liver here, so one can assess more clearly for steatosis. You can collect samples. Here it's bile, it could be urine, and blood samples are collected uh, throughout the process, which runs for about three hours, to allow one to determine the function of the organ during uh, this regional perfusion. 
And in the, in the context of kidney transplantation, and this is uh, a paper that's been published, uh, been um, under review by my colleague uh, Gabriel Aniscu, known to many, all of us probably in ESOT. And this really uh, demonstrates a, an early increase in the graft utilization in kidney transplantation, albeit without statistical significance and an improved outcome in terms of reduction in delay graft function from 31 to 23 percent and a modest but nevertheless uh, important increase in kidney function at one year. And so these perfusion techniques are exciting and it may be that a combination of perfusion and reconditioning will be the future uh, for those of us working, particularly as we increase our use of donors uh, from cir uh, following circulatory death and older donors. And finally, I just want to talk briefly about one potential strategy around the treatment of the recipient. And this is work uh, that I, I have led in Edinburgh, looking at how we might precondition the kidney uh, by increasing hemoxygenase expression in the recipient in renal transplantation. And this is really work that was started by Matt Beasley in the lab, who run in vivo experiments related to this, and then uh, finished by Rachel Thomas, who ran a uh, phase two study on this and some of the mechanistic work being done by Katie Connor. All of them were postgraduate students in my lab. Hemoxygenase 1 is uh, an inducible stress responsive enzyme which is expressed in many, many cells and which breaks down heme and leads to the production of byproducts from the breakdown of heme, uh, each of which have these protective properties. And what we have demonstrated in experimental studies is that by increasing hemoxygenase 1, we can reduce renal injury in both a model of native and transplant-related ischemia reperfusion injury. And this translation of basic science uh, and experimental science uh, has allowed us to now run a clinical trial in uh, by delivering by by administering he, the drug hemarginate, which is an inducer of hemoxygenase 1, uh, to our patients. And uh, we ran a, a phase 2 study which demonstrated that we could upregulate the expression of hemoxygenase 1 in renal transplant recipients. And we are now uh, undertaking a multi center randomized control trial uh, to compare hemarginate versus placebo in order to reduce the lay graph function. So what I've tried to demonstrate is a variety of strategies that we might use to combat ischemia reperfusion injury through addressing challenges in the logistical process to allow us to reduce cold ischemic time to a minimum, to consider a variety of perfusion and preservation techniques that, uh, and particularly with the capacity to recondition the organs prior to transplantation and also treatment of the recipient. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that was interesting and helpful. And uh, we look forward to seeing much more. Well, I hope you enjoy this series of lectures as you see much more of us, the Akita board members. And hopefully, we will be seeing more of you. Thank you very much indeed.